Hello, welcome back. Today I'll be discussing uh, Angular. You might have heard it of it. It's a client-side framework used by programmers to build out websites. Um, and here are some things I believe you should know before you start to work with it. Uh, Angular is an object-oriented client-side framework used for building web applications and is used to communicate is a separate application once built that is used to communicate with the server side application that utilizes the REST architectural pattern. I'm not going to get into what the REST architectural pattern is um, at the moment, but in general, the objective of using the Angular framework is to offload any operations that do not require the persisting of information on the server side to the client's computer and thus reducing the amount of uh, um, operations and work that has to be done by the server and only using the server when it's needed. Furthermore, the utilization of the REST API pattern on the back end by servers, and which is necessary for Angular ap applications usually, um, allows for easier integration with other applications and systems since they can make direct calls to the API without having to parse the website HTML or and you don't have to add support for like RRS support, which is how other applications used to access backend data in the past. Um, there were other ways, but this is just one of them. Um, what this means is that Angular frameworks that have a backend REST API in use, um, they tend to lend themselves better for like mobile applications that are built out because the mobile applications will just be able to make calls to the REST API and uh, um, all the work on the back end will already be done. All you would have to do is build out the mobile application. Consequently and ideally, Angular applications usually result in reduced network utilization and server load if the site is heavily used and quite heavily used by users and repetitively used. I'll explain what that, I mean by that uh, later, but this scenario doesn't always happen, uh, always occur uh, for web applications. Uh, when you access, what you don't realize is, a lot of people don't realize is that when you access an Angular website for the first time, um, it sends you a package which contains the Angular application code that will run on your computer. This doesn't just consist of the code that you wrote, but also the necessary libraries um, that the Angular framework needs to operate. This can actually be in size of like over a megabyte in general, because those libraries are quite large. I've seen it over two megabytes at times, and I can imagine it just gets much larger in some cases. Um, hackers and competitors can abuse this continuously by requesting the Angular website. Uh, even someone that doesn't really know much about uh, um, it, they can keep on hitting your website for those files and it'll cause a major increase on your host costs um, and network utilization costs if you pay for server uh, network usage uh, of that. But this could also be done with regular websites by using a DDoS attack um, or DOS attacks and its variants. What I'm saying is that there are some scenarios in which it might not be a good idea to use Angular. For example, when people won't continuously be logged in and entering or navigating around your website on a frequent basis, or sites where they rarely visit more than once or twice a month. An example of such sites would be drop shipping sites um, or sites that advertise a book or movie, because chances are they'll just go to it once or twice and then be done with it. Um, or a department uh, a website used by your department and not many people uh, in which people are entering in data into a system, like one person, not more. Remember, uh, there are a lot of highly uh, used sites that do not use Angular, like Plenty of Fish, Yahoo, or Groupon, and still pull in, are working quite efficiently. Furthermore, if you're developing with Angular, you need to have knowledge of Angular um, plus TypeScript, which is the language which people build out uh, Angular code in. 
which is a super set of uh, JavaScript. And plus, in addition to Angular, you're going to need to know backend technology. Consequently, there will be no more maintenance costs and development costs and effort involved, especially if you have to hire people with specialized uh, skill sets to work on it. Uh, by this, I mean you will need to hire backend developers, front-end developers, and for the changes uh, you want implemented or the enhancements, you'll have to have them communicate between each other as they build it out because they got those two components have to work together. Remember, Angular application is separate from the backend application. They just make calls and communicate with each other. Once again, this isn't necessarily the case, but it's useful to realize it because sometimes you could hire people that just work so well to, with each other or a uh, developer that knows both sides uh, that could act as the bridge between the two types of developers. Uh, plus, uh, there will be more development effort involved because you're developing two separate applications um, in these cases. In my experience, you can build a server-side application from scratch much more quickly uh, with less thought put into it. But this will offload all the processing to your server, uh, which is a downside, clearly, since you pay for processing done by your server. And whenever a user browses a page on a server-side web, um, application, it's going to remake a call for that page. Uh, so that could add, add to the cost. Um, but in order to compensate for that, you could use a lighter weight JavaScript framework that'll uh, put off the uh, load to the client and uh, without having that initial packet sent out. Angular 2 is also built in TypeScript, like I mentioned before. What this means is that it compiles into JavaScript. While this is great, it comes with a catch. Since a lot of the code is automatically converted um, prior, the generated uh, JavaScript from the TypeScript um, will have additional bulk to the code um, unnecessarily. This is just a side effect of having code gen uh, automatically generated. If you were to write the JavaScript yourself and knew what you're doing and were good high-level uh, JavaScript uh, developer, you could actually write more cleaner, less code. But then there would be more stuff you had to compensate for. Um, and if you didn't, you can make actually make, write more code than, this, that, than the actual Angular compiler would create itself. Another thing to note about Angular is that it's changed over time. The first release of Angular is completely different from Angular 2. They're two different frameworks even though uh, it seems like it's a version of it. And that's a good thing to keep in mind, but I won't go more into that. A strength of Angular is that it's object-oriented, like I mentioned before. If you build uh, applications with it using good object-oriented principles, it will be more structured, and you'll have a lot more reusable code for rapidly building out other applications in the future. Furthermore, since the Angular 2 framework and above has been available for quite a long time. Uh, on a side note, Angular 2 and the higher versions, they are the same framework, it's just enhancements made to it over time. Um, since it's been around for quite some time now, there are a lot of great examples of code you can use for reducing your code imprint and uh, reducing the amount of processing power your application will uh, utilize on the client side, so it'll work faster for them. Furthermore, Angular has a large active community that has been active for a long time. Um, so you're going to have a lot of good tutorials and teachers out there that could teach you, and you won't have to repeat those mistakes. But on, the, on a side note, a lot of languages have risen and fallen out of popularity in the past, and that's a good note to make. Um, this is just how the software uh, uh, programming field is. So you always have to keep learning. But on a side note, the downside of object-oriented principles and the flexibility um, allowed by the Angular framework is that if you don't implement them properly, you're going to have very messy and bulky code. So it could be a double-edged sword. But if you hire developers that have experience and have uh, uh, used Angular framework, which is possible now since it's a very mature language, uh, you shouldn't have that problem.
in my opinion though about the angular framework and this is just my personal opinion uh, like most of these uh, 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 side comment uh, uh, YouTube videos are is that the future of client-side development is not in JavaScript I think that in the future JavaScript is going to decline in popularity with the advent of WebAssembly which is something new that has been created by Google Microsoft and a lot of companies working together um, I see them migrating towards WebAssembly and I and the reason why is because it's a new format that allows you to program in any language it's basically a binary format which is very close to machine language and it could take any you could program in any language you want I'll be converted to that language and then I'll run in the browser much quicker quicker than JavaScript could uh, what this means and it runs on the client's computer as well um, I mentioned in my ASP.NET Core web development lecture the first one uh, that I saw most programming languages merging into a single language in the future and I believe that WebAssembly is logical progression of this concept or idea or thought or vision that I, I had uh, for the development of languages going forward I see newer web developers will only need to learn one language rather than JavaScript and the backend language in order to build out a network friendly applications with a complicated UI uh, that's just how it seems to be going and the technology that tends to dominate is the one that's easiest to use and fastest to develop with and if and fastest to learn so if they only have to learn one thing versus multiple things and the quirks of those different languages it just makes sense that they'll be able to build out applications much faster with uh, uh, one language so I don't think JavaScript is going to and frameworks like angular will dominate for the next uh, um, in the next uh, 10 years you have to remember JavaScript was created in I think 1995 so it's not that old um, it's probably just uh, around uh, I think a little bit over 20 years old so you got to see what's happening and web development has changed a lot so yeah that's my two bits on angular and I think those are the things that you should know before using it or implementing a project in it because you don't always need it right so until next time see you later